Welcome to Books on Air, the podcast you really don't want to miss. I'm Suzanne Harris, and today you'll get a sneak peek behind the scenes at what it's like to be an author. You'll hear the backstory behind their book, who or what inspires them, where their ideas come from, who knows. You might even get the inside scoop on a brand new project. If you want to know more about them, then we'll tell you where to find them and their work on social media. Joining me today is M.P. Coleman, and she's here to talk about her book, Skin Deep. M.P., welcome. Thank you. Pleasure now, to be here. Well, you know, it's my pleasure. I really, really, I love your work. And I'm always curious. Let's time travel together back in time where this all began. I know that you started writing at a young age because I do my homework. But I'm always curious. There's always a reason. Either somebody was a reader and there was a particular book or character or something that that inspired them to write. I remember an author who told me that she read Little Women and she was inspired by the character of Jo because she'd never thought about a woman being a writer. And here was this powerful woman character who was a writer. Sometimes people have a spark and that spark is recognized by maybe a teacher or a professor or maybe even a family member who encourages that person to write. Sometimes there's a life event, positive, negative, but just something that happens in the person's life, and it it almost calls them, it almost says to them, you have to share this in written form. So you started writing when you were in grade school. Why did, did you yes. start why did you start writing when you were in grade school? Well, um, Basically, because I am the youngest of four, and my my sisters are five, four, and three years older than I am. So they were off doing things like, okay, I grew up on a farm, so they were off doing chores, and I was left at home to entertain myself and just happened. I don't know that I ever really got into reading any books that inspired me, but my imagination took hold and I just started writing about anything and everything, I suppose. I don't have any recollection of what I wrote about, but you know, that was back in the day of the cowboys and and all those kinds of shows. So, and I loved horses. So I'm sure that they involved horses and cowboys and bank robbers and things like that. But <laughs> yeah, I have no, I have no memory of of that. But when I got to high school, I um, I did develop characters, write them down, and and kids in my class uh, kind of encouraged me. I let them read little sections of them, and, and they uh, found them interesting enough that that they kept reading them when I'd throw another chapter at them. I find that truly amazing, that you were sharing your writing with your friends. And the other thing that's so amazing is that they liked it, and they said, yes. we want more. I mean, for high school kids to say that, you must have really been right on target with something. Did any of your teachers recognize your talent, MP? Um, well, I understand. I did not get this firsthand, but I, I understand that one of my grade school teachers did tell the class that came after us that, if they had a problem figuring out what to write about, they should go see and talk to M.P. Coleman. <laughs> and, and that kind of you know, blew me away. I didn't remember writing anything in fifth or sixth grade. Somebody 
somebody, some teacher recognized that spark of talent and good for that person that they recognized it. I'm just sorry that whoever it was didn't tell you that when they had you in their class. Wow. That's pretty cool. That's a great story. (laughs) What drew you to romance? Well, I don't know. I guess um, if that's what runs the country, runs the world. I mean, you can have all kinds of things happen to you, but always there's there's other people, even if it's not male-female relationship, even if it's just the bro-type relationship or the sister type relationship it's it's always there and i believe that that that's what drives the best things in life i like that i confessed to you earlier that i watch the hallmark channel <laughs> and i don't confess that often but one of the reasons i do is because at this moment in time you know I need for the good guys to win. And I need to know that at the end of that two-hour movie that I'm watching on Hallmark, I need to know that the boy is going to get the girl that I want him to get, and the girl's going to be with the boy that I want her to be with. And I don't care how they get there, because that's the fun. And when the romances, when the, the romantic movie is over, I always feel better because I've been able to escape all of this stuff that's going on in our world right now. I mean, thank you for writing such a terrific romance, by the way. Well, thank you. I'm I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. I like your characters. Let's talk about Skin Deep because this is a pretty interesting book. Let's give the listeners, just an overview of the book. We don't want to give away everything, just the overview. Okay. So um, Leanne is the female protagonist here, and um, she was going to Superior to visit her parents, and she was doing detour along the way. And instead of taking, you know, four-lane roads, which there are many going up to Superior from Chicago, she was taking back roads, and and all of a sudden she realized she had made a wrong turn, which was regrettable because she was low on gas. And, of course, she ran out of gas. So she had to walk on this back road that she doesn't even know if it leads anywhere. Um, and after about three miles, she oh, there's a cabin off in the woods there, and there's smoke coming out of the chimney. And so she goes and kind of makes herself at home, although she's <laughs> nervous about it because, you know, it's got to be a guy's, and she doesn't know, you know, what he's going to do when he finds her, you know, you know beat her up and throw her out or be nice to her and help her. And, uh, well, she's kind of falls asleep at the, at the hearth there and, and trying to warm up. And, and then Matthew comes in and discovers her in his cabin. And he's none too pleased about this, but he knows that a blizzard is coming and the way she's dressed She's never going to make it the 10 miles, 15 miles, however long it was. I can't remember right on hand. Um, to town. So he let her stay. And they, the blizzard came and they had to spend three days together in enforced togetherness um, before the, the rope. Excuse me. Before the road was cleared and gas delivered by the plow guy, and then Leanne was able to head back to Chicago. That is the whole premise of it. It's the beginning of it. 
Have you got a part? And go ahead. I was just going to ask if you had a part of the book that you wanted to share. Sure. This is as she is driving back to uh, Chicago. Um, After finding her way back to civilized roads, Leanne followed the direct route of four-lane freeway, amazed by how quickly the miles flew by. However, she found it no less tiring. She reached Janesville before finally succumbing to her exhaustion and locating a motel for the night. She had stopped earlier for dinner, hoping food would revive her. While it had helped, watching other patrons, families, couples, some intent on their meals, others engaged more in conversation than the meal, left her feeling lonesome, even though she took most of her meals alone at restaurants. She never recalled being overcome with this deep sense of melancholy. After requesting a wake-up call for 5 a.m., so she could arrive at work on time, Leanne's head hit the pillow and she fell asleep instantly. The ringing phone woke her from her dreams, filled with snippets of conversations with Matthew, and she longed to be able to roll over to continue them. However, work beckoned. A quick shower refreshed her, but the melancholy, the nagging feeling that she had left something behind at the cabin, even though she had double-checked her overnight bag twice, remained with her as she drove to her apartment. She quickly changed clothes and hopped back into her car, arriving at work just in time to punch in. Oh, you're leaving me hanging. Oh, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You're leaving (laughs) me hanging, MP. I love it. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Now, you have a real you have a real way with words your prose is almost like a painting you your descriptions are so well written and and put so well that you bring me literally right into the book immediately when you started to read about Leanne driving down the freeway i was right there in the car with her driving back and i could feel how upset she was and how how melancholy she was she can't quite put her finger on what's wrong but she knows that there's something wrong you're a really excellent writer thank you is there a story behind this book you know it occurs to me that most books have two stories. There's the story that the reader reads from the book that the author's written, but then there's always a backstory. How did these characters and this situation come to you? Where do your ideas for your plots come from, MP? Well, mostly I will create characters. And I'll kind of think about, well, what do I want these characters to do? And all of a sudden, they take over. I, I do not admit to writing any books. These, the characters, oh, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of a reporter instead of an author. Because they come to me, they tell me their story, and I write it down. Wow. Do you realize that you've just described for me and our listeners a true creative mind. When I talk to fiction writers, it's very interesting, for me anyway. I mean, I've written a little fiction myself, and I'm I'm a fiction writer that sees the characters, and, and like you do, you see the characters, and the characters tell the story. I get that. And they don't look like some actor or actress or celebrity. They look like the unique individual that they are themselves. And people who do not have that kind of creative brain think that sounds crazy, but it's not. It's creativity at its absolute best. The way that you just described how you write tells me why you're such a good writer. Thank you for sharing that. 